Let's take your Bibles. 2 Samuel chapter number 11. Let's look at verse number 15. The Bible says, And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. Let me read the context again on this, on this verse. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. Now here's a letter from King David. And David sends uh, this letter to the, to the general of his army. And he says, Put Uriah in the hottest battle. And when the heat's really on, you all just pull back and let him die. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for good choir singing. Thank you for good special singing. Thank you, Lord, for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for the lady that was saved over at the jail. Thank you for the open ministry, the open door of the ministry of the jail and those that dedicate their Sunday morning to go over there and preach the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for being a good God, for meeting all of our needs. Thank you for your good grace. Lord, the unmerited favor of God. We don't deserve it, but we bless you for it. Thank you for a great place we can come and worship you this morning. Thank you for a church house filled with folks that have come to hear about Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord, for folks that have labored around the building and labored around the grounds. Uh, Lord, folks that have worked a uh, uh, laborious job so they can come and bring an offering uh, so the gospel can go out uh, in our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. Uh, God, thank you for uh, uh, good folks that we've uh, uh, come to know and fall in love with, uh, the saints of God that we can worship you with. Uh, God, thank you for all your blessings. Uh, Lord, thank you, Lord. We're not in a hospital somewhere. Uh, thank you, Lord. We're not in jail somewhere. Uh, thank you, Lord. We're not on our way to hell. Uh, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. Uh, Lord, we're without excuse not to bless you and praise you. Oh, God, you've been good to us. Uh, oh, God, we bless your holy name. Uh, oh, God. Uh, oh, God. Uh, Oh, God, we bless you today. Uh, oh, help us now from the Word of God. Uh, Amen. Lord, there's no telling the needs of folks here today. There may be somebody here today that's really hurting. Oh, God, would you go dispatch some grace their way? Oh, God, there may be somebody here that's hard-hearted. <laughs> Oh, God, would you break their hearts for your righteousness' sake. Uh, God, there may be somebody here lost. Uh, oh, God, would you convict them uh, and help us to see them born again. Uh, God, meet every need. Uh, God, glorify your name. Uh, God, touch Miss Kathy there at the hospital. Thank you for Miss Sonny being here. Touch her. Uh, thank you for Miss Crystal being here. Touch her. Uh, God, thank you for the colonel, Brother Ed. Uh, God, touch him, help him. Uh, God, the other needs. Uh, God, help Brother J.D. this week. Uh, Lord, I pray the leukemia would go in remission. And you'd use that man of God many more years. Uh, God, I pray this morning for our country. Oh, God, we need revival. Oh, God, we need a movement of God. Uh, oh, God, uh, do something in America. And God, will bless you for it. Uh, help us now, we pray. Use this unworthy vessel, for it's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to several things from the text. I want you to know what happens to us to get to verse 15. First thing I want you to see is the slackness. The Bible said in verse number 1, and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. 
But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Now the Bible says it was the time when the kings went to battle. But King David didn't go. He stayed, he tarried at Jerusalem. He got slack concerning his obligations. Can I say one person once said that an idol minds the devil's workshop. And the devil doesn't uh, 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 care if you come to church. The devil don't care if you read your Bible. The devil don't care if you pray. Uh, the devil don't care if you give an offering this morning. All he wants you to do is get slack concerning God. David was still king. He just wasn't where he's supposed to be. And I'm looking across congregation this morning, and Brother Sam, I can't help to think there's somebody here not where they're supposed to be. You're just not where you're supposed to be. Say, so, well, I'm in church. Good. But you are, are you in the will of God? Uh, David got slack. When we get slack, we give an opportunity for the devil to work. Mm. We see the slackness. Uh, I can't get off that. Christian will tell you when they leave the sheriff's department and their cruisers, the last thing they see is a sign uh, that says complacency kills. Uh, when he's out uh, 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 serving in the neighborhoods uh, uh, and he's uh, in uniform uh, and he's being a deputy sheriff, uh, he can't get slack for one minute. It might cost him his life. Hmm? Uh, can I say as children of God, we can't get slack. It may cost somebody eternal life. We see the slackness. Can I say, notice the sinfulness. Verse number 3, the Bible says, And David sent and inquired after the woman. See, David goes out on his porch, he looks over, and he sees a woman bathing. And can I say, first of all, if he'd been where he's supposed to be, that wouldn't have happened. But he's not where he's supposed to be, and all of a sudden it happened. Hmm? The devil presents an opportunity. Now David could have turned, went back in the palace, been the end of it but he couldn't get it off his mind. Mm. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, uh, and she returned unto her house. Can I say... David is now caught in adultery. He has sinned against God. Hmm? Now can I say, he's not the only one sinned that day. Bathsheba sinned too. Now, now let me help you with something. Things were different in that day than this day. Back then, women were treated more like property than a helpmeet. And can I say in that day, if you dishonored the king, it could have cost you your life? And I'm sure all of that came into her mind. The king wants to see me. She goes and the king uh, 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 then is seduces her. Can I say there are some things it would be better to die than to disgrace God? Mm. Now, I'm not saying that would be your, your fate or my fate. We never know what we're going to do until an opportunity is presented. So you better be very careful judging people. Uh, but for the grace of God, there goeth I. But sin occurred. Sin occurred because of slackness. Can I say that it didn't end there? Notice the suppression in verse number 6. We find it that David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. Look at verse 8. David said, uh, 
Uriah, go down to thy house, wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, uh, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. Uh, there is suppression here because there is a cover-up. Hmm? There's a cover-up because Bathsheba ends up with child. And so David says, we'll get this thing made right right here. We'll bring Uriah in from the battlefield. We'll have Uriah go visit his wife. He'll go back to the battlefield. And when he comes home, when the, uh, the battle's over, he finds his wife's with child, and he'll just assume it's his. Case closed, no problem. Let's cover it up. Can I say, uh, when there's sinfulness, the only thing that can be done is a cleansing, right. 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 not a cover-up. Right. Right. Huh? You got sin in your life. I hate you got sin in your life, but I got some good news. Uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all uh, sin. Uh, there is a cleansing for sin. Uh, Get, and now let me help you something. Uh, God is willing to forgive and He's ready to forgive. Uh, God hates sin uh, and He hates sin in the lives of people uh, and He hates sin in the lives of His children. Uh, but He's made provision for sin uh, and if you'll repent of your sin, He'll, say, he'll f forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from it. What a blessing. Amen. But David didn't go that route. Mm, David's kind of like Adam. When Adam and Eve sinned, Adam making fig leaves to cover up his sin. Amen. Cover ups never work. God had to slay some animals and cover them in the animal skins uh, uh, to cover their sin. Uh, can I say only God can forgive sin? Uh, mm, he didn't go that route. Now let me just stop right here. Psalm 51, he does repent of his sin. The next chapter, God sends a man of God to go down there and tell him, Thou art the man. And you ought to be thankful for a preacher that'll preach against sin. Amen. David did get right with the Lord. And let me help you something. David went on to do more for God after his sin than he did before his sin. Uh, we live in a day and age where they say if somebody sins, they can never be used of God anymore. Hogwash. Uh, I can take you through the Bible and show you all kinds of people that sinned, uh, but God forgave them and God used them to do great things. By the way, God used a rooster to preach to Peter. Uh, uh, he used a jackass to preach to Balaam. Uh, God can use whoever, whatever God wants to do. He's God. Hallelujah. But then notice, if you will, the short-sightedness. David thought he had it all figured out. It is amazing we think we have it all figured out and we don't have nothing figured out. Uh, look at verse number 9. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his own house. Uh, I want to tell you something. When I go away to preach a meeting and I come home, I ain't seen Miss Net for three, five, six, seven days, whatever long I'm gone, I can't wait to see her. I guarantee if I've been on the battlefield, I'm going home. Nothing like home cooking, nothing like seeing my wife, nothing like being at home. But this man didn't go home. David had all set up, even sent a feast. He said, go on down there to the house and enjoy yourself. Nah, he just slept at the door of the king's house. Huh? Ruin David's plan. Can I say God's got a way of ruining our plans? Uh, and then we see the slain or the assassination of Uriah. Look what's in verse 16. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah into a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Uriah died that day. Can I say Uriah died? And he died in no fault of himself. Can I say that you and I Sometimes get caught up in situations and bad things happen and it has nothing to do with us. Right. Mm. We need to go on and serve God anyway. 
Can I say sometimes we end up, Brother Ron, in bad situations that are the fault of us? But aren't you glad for a merciful God that even when we blow it, He's willing to forgive? I'm glad God can take our mess and make something beautiful out of it. Uh, now, I want to look at Uriah. I want to look at his name, first of all. You know, I'm a big name guy. In the Bible days, if your name didn't fit your character, they'd change your name. So these names really tell something about these people. And Uriah's name means the Lord is my light. Can I say there can nothing be better said of you than that the Lord is your light. When people say, what is the hope of your life, the Lord? When people say, why are you so happy, the Lord? Uh, when people say, uh, how do you get through that, the Lord? Uh, the Lord is my light. Uh, and he gave me the light of the word of God to lead me and direct me. Uh, what a blessing that the Lord is my light. Uh, I had a stepfather who used to say that I could fall into a pile of manure and come out smelling like a rose. What he didn't understand is the Lord is my light. The Lord takes care of me. The Lord blesses me. Everything I have came from the hand of the Lord. Uh, we see his name. Notice something about Uriah's nature. Look in verse number 11. And Uriah said unto David, because you hear David's, he's, he's all confused. Why didn't you go down to your house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in open fields. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest uh, and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. What character, what a nature. Uh, uh, this man said, uh, hey, my comrades in arms can't be at home with their wives. Uh, uh, the ark of the Lord is out there in a tent. Uh, hey, uh, uh, my commander's out there and my uh, countrymen are open fields. Uh, I'm not going to uh, enjoy blessings while they're hurting. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, have a character uh, and I'm going to restrain myself uh, and consecrate myself uh, to where I'm going to be counted amongst my countrymen. Huh? Wow. I don't know how many people I've heard over the years say, well, they was doing it, so I did it. Not this guy. This guy had some real character about him. His nature said, nope. I'm not going to do something that brings pleasure to me when my countrymen are out there suffering. Hmm? We see his name. We see his nature. Now notice his nobility. This guy right here, he's not some slough somewhere. How many of you have seen that, that old movie with Andy Griffith called No Time for Sergeants? That was a great movie. Kids go watch it. It's in black and white. It's great. Uh, uh, and, and, and we'll make a latrine orderly out of you. Permanent latrine orderly. Uh, hmm. But can I say Andy Griffith played an oaf in that movie. He just old country boy. Didn't have sense enough, you know, coming out of the rain. That's not this guy. This guy isn't some oaf, some guy just out there uh, uh, fighting for Israel. Notice his nobility. The Bible says over in uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 23, let me get there, I'm in the new Bible. It says this, in 2 Samuel 23, in verse number th uh, 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 39, the Bible says, Uriah the Hittite, 30 and 7 in all. Leading up to that verse 39, it names 36 other mighty men of valor of David. These were the mighties. 
These were the Navy SEALs. These were the Airborne Rangers. These were the toughest of the tough. Uh, Names 37 of them uh, that were the elite fighting force of Israel. Uh, these were the best that Israel had. Uh, these were the ones that David depended on. Uh, these are the ones uh, that David, when he was old, uh, said, I'd like to have a drink out of the wells of the water of Bethlehem. Uh, and three of these mighty men of valor uh, fought Philistines all night, uh, went and got him a drink of water, fought Philistines all the way back, uh, and brought uh, water to David. Uh, we're talking about uh, 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 Rambos, if you will. Uh, and here, uh, one of these mighty men, uh, one of those uh, that would put his life on the line, uh, Hey, he's the one that David had assassinated. Can I say something? What a man Uriah is. Now, let me build this up. I'll get to the thought. Here's a mighty man of valor. This ain't no rookie. This guy has been in battle after battle after battle, and he has proven himself to be a warrior. This man, Brother Brian, has put his life on the line many a times, and he knows how to use a sword, and he knows how to use a shield, and he knows uh, moves that other people doesn't, doesn't know, uh, and he has uh, been victorious every time. Uh, and now uh, he's been sent back to the battlefield, uh, and his king... Uh, 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 or his lord, his king has sent him uh, and his lord Joab the general's there uh, the one that he said jo uh, uh, Joab my lord's out there in the field I'm not going to be with my wife because Joab's out there uh, uh, Joab says Uriah I want you to go over here uh, it's the hottest battle uh, and Uriah's out there uh, he's facing valiant men uh, and he's out there slaying men uh, and he's out there uh, fighting uh, and he's leading a charge uh, and several uh, have been slew from uh, Israel that day uh, and Uriah gets to looking around uh, and Joab is general uh, Joab the one that he depends on uh, he's called for a retreat from everybody else uh, he looks and sees everybody else is falling back uh, this is a man uh, uh, that knows war. Uh, he knows what's going on, uh, but as everybody else falls back, uh, he has the mindset, uh, I'll not back up. Uh, I'll not give in. Uh, I'll keep on a fighting. Uh, I'll keep on a doing uh, what I know to do. Uh, I'm not going to back up. Uh, and I want to preach on that thought this morning. Uh, I'm not going to back up. Uh, there's too much at stake. Uh, I've come too far. Uh, I've seen God do too much I'm not backing up I'm going to continue on for the grace of God Amen. can I say he didn't back up on his convictions this man of character had some conviction about himself he said let all the rest of them turn and run I'm not backing up on my convictions huh can I say, uh, let the other churches take the pulpits out of the way. Uh, let them take the old hymns out of the way. Uh, let them take old godly singing out of the way. Uh, let them take godly living out of the way. Uh, let them have the mindset, come as you are and leave as you came. Uh, but me, I'm not backing up on my convictions. Uh, I still serve a thrice holy God. Uh, hey, the word of God, the King James Bible, still pure and true. Uh, uh, the things of God are still holy. Uh, hey, uh, the pulpit still means something. Uh, hey, preaching still means something. Uh, hey, godly singing still means something. Uh, hey, living a separated life still means something. Uh, hey, making a difference and giving up the gospel in this world still means something. I'm not backing up on my convictions. I don't care if every Baptist church in the world quits preaching the Bible. Uh, God's been too good to me. Uh, hey, I've been going on four decades of preaching this Bible. Uh, I'm not backing up on what God said. Uh, uh, he didn't back up on his convictions. Can I say he didn't back up on the commandments of the Word of God? Hey, I still believe if God said it, that settles it. 
I've heard people say, God said it, I believe it, that's it. It don't matter if you believe it or not. God said it, that settles it. Uh, it's forever settled in heaven. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, if God said it's sin, it's still sin. Uh, if God said thou shalt, we better. Uh, if God said thou shalt not, we better not. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the Bible still says uh, we're to live godly, soberly uh, in this present world uh, so the world can see a difference in us. Uh, we're to be a separated people. We're to be different than the world. Most churches are trying to look like the world. Uh, I've looked at the world. It's a mess. And these churches that are trying to look like the world, they're a mess. Uh, the Bible said, come ye out from among them. Be a separate people. Uh, hey, uh, we've come to worship Almighty God. Uh, our worship ought to not resemble the world. Uh, our worship ought to resemble the Lord. Uh, hey, uh, uh, we ought to go live different, look different, and be different because the Word of God commands us to be. Uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, all things become new. Huh? And I say he didn't back up on the commandments of the Word of God. I'm not looking for a new version. I'm still trying to learn things from the old one. I've uh, been studying this Bible 50 years. Told my Sunday school class, every time I open it and get into it, I, I find that I, I'm just amazed. God shows me something, something I've never seen before. Because He's a great God. Can I say our Savior's alive? We don't serve a risen, uh, I'm a dead Jew, we serve a risen Savior. He was the living Word, He's alive. Uh, can I say that book's alive? Uh, it's up to date. Uh, it's current. Uh, well, God's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, he saw the end from the beginning, uh, and He knew exactly uh, how to take holy men of old and inspire them to pin down His Word that would be relevant for every age, my dear friends. Uh, you say, well, I just can't understand it. Well, you need to get better acquainted with the author. Uh, you can't understand it because you don't get into it. Because if you get into it, it'll get into you. And then you'll understand it. Uh, can I say he didn't back up on his convictions? He didn't back up on the commandments of the Word of God. Can I say he didn't back up on his commitments? He went into that battle to fight. And fight he did. Say it cost him his life. Yeah, he went out in a blaze of glory. I'd rather go out in the fight than go out in the grandstands watching other people fight. Uh, he was committed to some things. Now, don't get me wrong. I've heard some Baptist preachers that needed to be committed. Uh, get a padded room. But can I say this today? We need to be committed to the Lord. We need to be committed to His church. We need to be committed to getting the gospel out. We need to be committed to be the child of God that He's called us to be. That You just need to be committed. Some of you, you're not committed. You're like a hummingbird. You're in, out, up, down, all around. You need to be committed. Huh? Listen. There's a lot of things I'm, I've not done right in my life. But one thing that I can honestly say is I love the church. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen. Now, I want to be committed to the things of God. He, he didn't back up on his commitments. Can I say this morning, he didn't back up on his compassion. Wow. Wow. Right. Good. Can I say he's out there fighting and he loves his king Amen. who has just sent out his death warrant. He loved his king Amen. to the end. Can I say this, that he loved his country to the end. Amen. He's fighting for Israel. Hmm? He loved it to the end. Can I say he loved his family? He loved his wife, not even knowing that she, she had uh, uh, disgraced his name. Wow. But he loved her, and he's fighting for her. Let me just say something. There, there is some things we're fighting for. Uh, can I say... You ought to be willing to fight for your family. You ought to be willing to fight for the Word of God. You ought to be willing to fight for our church. 
We ought to be willing to fight for our country. Uh, uh, you ought to be willing to fight for things that are right. Hmm. Listen, you can believe this or not. The only thing keeping America afloat are churches. I'm talking about Bible churches. Uh, it's the only thing keeping this country afloat. Uh, the Lord's looking. You know, see, He's the same yesterday, today, for every change is not. There is no time with God. A day's a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. God's looking right back at those folks that made this country great. Those folks that believed on Him. Those folks that uh, uh, put the document of the Constitution together with a, a fear of God in their heart. Those uh, uh, churches that were started here, the churches that sent missionaries around the world, uh, uh, the churches uh, uh, that preached uh, holiness and lived it. Uh, 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 Alexis de Tocqueville, uh, a great French statesman, came to America and he came and he looked at all the industry. Uh, he looked at the matchless constitution. Uh, he looked at everything. He said, What made America great? Uh, he found out when he went into the churches uh, and there was fire and holiness is being preached from the pulpit uh, he said America's great because America's good uh, and when America seeks as being good America sees being great right. there are some things worth fighting for and the fight on battle line is in the churches and having a fire for God why do you think so many wicked people in this world fight against the church. Why do you think there's legislation even now before Congress that will hurt the church? Because the devil knows this is the last battleground. Hmm. He didn't back up on his, com on his compassion. Let me say this lastly. He didn't back up regardless of the circumstances around him. He's in the hottest battle. Everybody else is pulling back. And he didn't find him a juniper tree and had a little pity party. Woe is me. Nobody cares about me. The king's pulled back on me. Joab's pulled back on me. I'm out here fighting alone. Nobody cares. No. He didn't back up regardless of his circumstances. Some of you don't take very much to knock you out. Somebody don't shake your hand. Somebody says something, you know, that you don't appreciate or, or the preacher preaches on something you don't like or, you know, uh, you stub your toe somewhere and somebody don't come and, 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 you know, bring you six meals to your house and, you know, 15 bouquets of flowers. You're done. That's not this guy. Regardless of his circumstances, he didn't back up. I read this and I thought this was pretty good. The church is not an audience to be entertained. The church is an army to be empowered. When are we going to get to fighting? Now, our weapons are not carnal. We don't fight against or wrestle against flesh and blood. We fight on our knees. When are we going to get a hold of God again? Move heaven towards earth. See a true move of God, not some of this hokey pokey stuff we see out there. Something that changes not only lives but communities. Let me say, Uriah, he didn't back up. My question is, will you and I? Say, preacher, I'm not going to back up. You better be careful what you say. We're supposed to say, by the grace of God, God willing. I'm not going to back up. But what will help us when the time comes is if we'll go ahead and ask God to put in us what we need in us, not to back up. 
I alluded to Christian a minute ago. Christian just, they didn't hire him, give him a badge and put him in a cruiser and say, go at it. He went through months and months of intense training and discipline. And they continually go through training. You see, he's on the front lines. He sees things that we can't comprehend. And somewhere along the line, he still has to process that and put the uniform on again. And regardless of some heinous thing he's seen or had to deal with, he might see you one day and realize it's hot and you need, you need some help, and he might go buy you an air conditioner because he's done that. Hmm? He couldn't have done that if he'd have backed up. You see, can I say sometimes... The real fight is showing compassion. Sometimes the real fight is being good to people that maybe don't deserve to be good to. Not backing up incorporates a whole lot. But I'll say this, when Jesus comes, and I believe he's coming soon, I won't be on a fighting line. I don't want to back up. I want to give it all I got. Now, I don't have as much in the tank as I did 40 years ago, but I still like giving it all I got. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. How about you? You giving it all you got? Have you allowed God to put enough in you that having done all to stand, you'll stand? Sometimes not backing up just means to stand. The Lord said through Ezekiel, he said, I look for a man to stand in the gap and make up the hedge, and I found none. He's still looking for men to stand in the gap, women to stand in the gap. He's looking today. Is he finding any? God help us to just stand our post and not back up. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, you come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. What a salvation message, but if you're here today and you're not saved and God's been dealing with you about that, if you come, we'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. It's real simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Maybe today the Lord's been dealing with you about something totally different. Why don't you just come talk to the Lord? Uh, maybe today... You need to just make up your mind. I'm going all in. Why don't you come? They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, help us. Lord, we really don't know how we'll react in the heat of the battle. But Lord, I know if you put enough in us, Lord, something of you will come out of us. So God, fill us with your grace, your mercy, your tender compassion, your loving kindness. God, may the fruit of the Spirit be incorporated in our lives in ways we've never seen. That, God, we can make a difference by not backing up. Help people today, Lord. Thank you for these in the altar. Lord, you know what they're praying about. Help them. God, I pray for somebody unsaved. They'll come, get born again. God, I pray for your children. God, help them. Lord, help folks. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.